this year has brought us a ton of new features and functionalities in Home Assistant, so the last release of the 2022 is looking the same. Let's look at what's new in 2022.12. Let's start with a note. This video has been recorded on the beta version, beta 5 release of Home Assistant 2022.12. Of course, most of the features that you see here should end up in the future release or full release. But sometimes things don't go according to plan and some things may be pushed to the January. Couple of releases back, Home Assistant crew decided to release schedules. And schedules are awesome. This is something that you can do, for example, to schedule some of the daily repeated routines, such as heating and control your heating with it, when it's on and off. The other possible case for the scheduler was to water your plants, if needed, make an alarm to wake you up in the morning, or turn on the lights in the afternoon. But what everybody was missing was calendar. And I do not mean Google Calendar, because this is a cloud service. I'm talking about the local instance of the calendar that has no Google access. If you now go to integrations, click on add integration, type in calendar, you have new integration called local calendar. Clicking on it will enable you to select the name for it. Let's call this one work, submit, and now the calendar is created. On the left side, you have calendar tab, click on it, and you can select all of your available calendars. Yes, you can have multiple local calendars. I already have one for school, and this one is for work. If I want to create event, I can type in the summary, lunch with client, give it a description, lunch with president, Select the calendar, work, date, let's make it this Friday at 13. Don't forget to change the end date also to Friday. If you want, you can repeat it. For example, weekly, every Friday, every four weeks. And let's end it when he will get fired on 30th of December of next year. OK, click on Add Event. And now we have new event for this calendar called Lunch with Client. All of those calendars are also exposed to Home Assistant, so you can also use them in automations. If I untick this box, we see that currently there is one event running and it's called Luca School. If we go to Developer Tools, you will see all your calendars available, School and Work for Me, you can see that the school one is in the on state, meaning that there is a current event running, while the work one is in the off state, because there is nothing in my schedule for today. And in the attributes, we see the message or the title or the event itself. It's a Lucas school or the next one, which is lunch with client for me. You have start time, end time, and if you specified location, but we didn't. So that can be used in automations and you can create automation based on either state of the sensor, is it on or off, or you can use the attribute message and compare this message or title of the event with the automation you want to create. Of course, you can also add the calendar to your UI. Click on three dots, edit dashboard, add card, calendar, and here you can give it a title, you can change the view from month, day to list view, and you can also select what entities will be visible in this calendar. Let's untick this box because I already have it. And let's press save. I now have two calendars. This one is a school schedule and this one is my work calendar. You can change it to the daily events and the seven day events. If you have any suggestions or tips on how to use calendars or have created already some kind of automation that is using local calendars, don't forget to drop a note down in the comment section. While we are already in the UI, you see tiles. 
tiles were introduced in the previous release of Home Assistant. But what tiles now got are the features. For example, this is my Roborock S5 Max. I have ability to start it, stop it or send it to zone. For the curtains, you can open them, close them or stop them. Lights have option to dim them or make them brighter. So if you have vacuum cleaners, lights, covers or similar, you now have ability to add features. And how do you do that? Click on three dots, edit dashboard, add card, tile, and let's for example add cover. Previously you had this. Click on features, add feature, select the proposed feature, cover open close, and that's it. This goes for all the other entities that have those extra features enabled. But as you can also see, that's not all. We now have colors in the cards or tiles. And these colors have been standardized now, meaning that the, if the entity has predefined states, those predefined states have different colors. It will take some time for us to get used to it, but we will now get used to specific colors for specific states of the entities. I think in September Home Assistant introduced Bluetooth. Passive Bluetooth at first, then the active Bluetooth also via the ESP Home. But today, thanks to Shelly and their parent company, we have Shelly enabled passive devices. If you have Shelly Generation 2 device, this is a plus device that also has a Bluetooth capability, you are able to activate passive Bluetooth scanning. For this, you need to make sure that your device is running firmware version 0.12 or higher. And also, Bluetooth has to be enabled. If not, tick the box in the new Shelly UI and save settings and reboot the device. Next step is for you to go to Home Assistant, find the generation 2 device that has Bluetooth enabled in the list. For me, this is this one called Corridor. You can see this yellow box around it, click on configure and select passive scanner mode. I'm not sure, but I don't think that active scanning is still working, but you can of course try setting it to the active. Click on submit. Now your device will be passive scanner that will automatically scan all the Bluetooth devices in range and send data to home assistant. The same way as ESP home does and the same way that the USB stick did for passive devices. Oh, by the way, music assistant. Yeah, unfortunately it is currently not working. The developer or author of the music assistant is aware of the issues with the PIP and he said that he will release the new version of music assistant to go with the new release of home assistant. So if you are having issues with music assistant not loading, that is because it's currently not working with the 2022.12 release of Home Assistant. Go to HACS and update if there is update available. If you go to Settings, Integrations, Helpers, there is a new helper called Text. This helper is more or less the same as the input text field, but since integrations cannot create input fields or helpers, this entity was created for them. Now, if for example, integration needs password field, it can create a password text field that is then used throughout the Home Assistant. You can use it, of course, also, but the first intention for this is to be used with the integrations or internal use. While we are already in the helpers page, there is a new helper available. Combine the state of several sensors. One of the most asked questions I had in regard to Shelly 3EM is how to combine all three phases and get the overall data of the power used. This is for you. Type here, for example, total power used and select entities that you want to sum. In the statistics characteristics, select sum. Precision can be left to or add more if you need and click on submit. This is a much easier and cleaner way of summing up entities without using templates. And I think that you will like this one here. Same as the tiles, the colors have been introduced to the history and the logbook. 
and those colors should now be unified, meaning that there is a brighter color for sun above horizon, darker below horizon. Those colors, as I mentioned, are standardized, and yes, it will take some time for us to get used to it. But this also depends on the type of the entity. If the entity itself has unlimited states, those colors cannot be standardized. This goes only for the entities that have predictable number of states. One thing that I must mention, but probably most of you will have currently no use for it, and that's Matter. Yes, from the Home Assistant release 2022.12, we have Matter in Home Assistant. Actually, we also have Threads, but maybe I shouldn't mention that. If you are lucky one and have a Matter compatible device, you can already pair it with the Home Assistant, or bind it, or bridge it, or whatever is the term used in the Matter standard. For this commissioning, you will need either Android app or the iOS app. More details about the Matter integration are available in the documentation. Let's look at some other noteworthy changes. One of the first things that your system will warn you when you boot up the new release of Home Assistant is that you do not have country and the default language defined in Home Assistant. The country has not been configured, click on the link. No country has been configured, please update the configuration by clicking on the Learn More button. If your system is handling this configuration in the YAML file, you will not be able to do it via the UI. Select Country and update your settings. Twinkly is one of those integrations that most of you need just now in December, so kudos to the team for bringing it in time for this Christmas. MQTT integration has reached gold level, and it now supports MQTT version 5 and WebSocket connections too. NO2 and VOC sensor entities are now working with ComKit. Shelly is now Platinum integration. ZHA supports Akara C1 pet feeder. And if you haven't seen that one, go check it out. Humidifier card now has on-off controls. Amazon Smart Assistant now supports humidifiers. BT Home has reached version 2. And by the way, we must thank Alterco for sponsoring the UUID for the Bluetooth SIG organization. Thank you, Shelly. Yes, Alterco is the parent company of the Shelly. Slack has do not disturb sensor that you can use in automation. So for example, if you put the status do not disturb in Slack, you can change light, dim sound or whatever. But this release also brings new integrations. AirQ, Aranet, Livisi Smart Home, Ruvak Tag BLE, Sensirio BLE, and the Text Entity or Text Helper. Push Bullet and Scrape can now be configured in the UI. Let's check that one. Add Integration, select Scrape. Let's input here the link. We will use Get Method, Username, Password, Nothing, Headers, Nothing, click Next. And here you can define values for the Web Scraper. I myself am not using web scrapers, but if you want, I can create separate video on this one. And then, of course, we have breaking changes. As always, before you update, check and see if any of the breaking changes here impact your system. For example, see if the unified network change in the new PoE entities that was introduced in 2022.11 is messing up your system or not. If you are using Cloudflare, make sure that you are not impacted by this change etc. And there is also one farewell in this release and that is Google Chat, because Google is killing all its own products. This time they kill the API. One bonus feature that is not featured in this release notes, but some of you may end up finding it. So let me show you quickly something else that's new in Home Assistant 2022.12 and that's Thread. If you are running Home Assistant on yellow, or have SkyConnect device, your system is already, or your system can already be Thread compatible or working both with Zigbee and Thread protocol. If you go to hardware, you will see a new option called configure. If you press on configure and before you do anything else, warning. Currently, this feature doesn't have a rollback, so don't press it if you don't need it and most probably you will not need it just now. What this allows, it allows the SkyConnect and built-in Zigbee inside the yellow to work both in the Zigbee protocol and Thread protocol. You tick the box next to enable multi-protocol support, 
click on submit and it flashes the new firmware on your device. Currently, as I said, it works only for the yellow devices and the SkyConnect devices, and it's one-way process, but later on you will be able to undo this and roll back to ZHA. I will not be going into details how it works, but it does also install one additional add-on that does the translation between the thread protocol on one side and the ZHA or ZigBee network on the other side. So there is a new add-on that will also be installed. If you do not need thread currently on your system, you can try it. But if you do not, wait for the update of this functionality. And yes, as I said, it does flash a custom firmware on both SkyConnect and the ZigBee controller inside the Home Assistant Yellow. So what's your favorite functionality for Home Assistant 2022.12? I really do love the calendar feature because I will not be relying on the Google Calendar anymore. And also, I love these features that were added to tiles. Sure, I also like the changes in the colors because the system looks prettier with it. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you who has become YouTube channel member. Thank you all for all of your support. But also thanks to each one of you who has watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button on the YouTube and becoming a YouTube channel member. The cost of the membership is around $2 or 2 euros per month with the supporter or around $5 or 5 euros if you are Omega supporter. Thank you. But also you can go and visit my merchandise store. The link is both on the YouTube channel and also in the video description and buy some goodies there. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye-bye and have fun.